For this panel, we have Indie Prize judges who are actually in charge of selecting the games for the show, who will be the finalists. For each show, they select 100 the best games, and after that, according to their highest marks, we have the winners for each of 10 of nine nominations. So the first panelist is Kadri Ugan from Game Founders. She see, I think, like thousand of games during the year, as well as Mike and Chris, because she select the games and projects that will be really successful for Game Founders family. Is it right? Exactly. And uh, we did have three prizes this this year. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> the next panelist is Mike Hines. He's from Amazon. He's also a judge. I think from the very first indie prize when we start getting more applications that we can actually accommodate in the show. He also see like Mike is a person who visits almost every, every conference in any part of the world, right? And always communicate with developers and really open for communication with anyone who has questions or need advices. True, Mike? Very true. Absolutely. I would never disagree with you. <laughs> Chris Lefebvre is the next charge, also like in charge of selecting the games, playing the games. He always provides really good feedback for all the developers who require. So if you were an applicant for Indie Prize this year or will be their future applicant, feel free to contact me or Chris directly and he will always provide you with the feedback, right? Right. I would never disagree with you on stage, Julia. Yeah, I know it's, it's a lot of fun. I mean, it's, uh, it's always fun to connect with game developers, especially indie game developers who are, who are open to that feedback and, and like to see that implemented. So absolutely. So for this panel, we want to cover the next question, the next uh, topics. We want to give you the full picture of how to be selected, not only for indie prize. This concerns any contest, any application you made with your game, whatever it is to, for publishers, for media, for review, or any other contest. Because there are some parts of your application forms that needs to be really nice and show your game from the very first view. And we want to start with uh, game descriptions. So how it works, I ask all the judges to pick up from indie prize applicants uh, the best examples that they consider to be really good and to comment on them, why they consider they are to be good and what are the common mistakes that developers usually do when they apply according to the topic. So the first comment was picked up by Mike. So probably you want to start. Uh, I would love to start. And thank you very, very much for putting that together, Yulia. To put the best product descriptions in context, it's really important to understand, I think, some of the problems that you get with bad product descriptions. What is a bad product description? It doesn't tell me what the game's like, and it uses uh, unsubstantiated superlatives. Like, this is the best game ever. Everyone will want it on their phone. It's going to be huge. So is it a first-person shooter? Is it a platformer? I don't even know what this game does. Okay, so they say, hey, this is the most amazing match three game ever. Wonderful. Why? And it's not in the product description. Those are bad product descriptions. Product descriptions that really help me tells me what the game is, and it tells me what's unique or different about the game. So um, I think all of the game descriptions up there do a pretty good job of telling you what the game is, what it's like, and the things that make it different or unique. Basically, why would a customer want to take their time to download the game? Same reason that I, as a judge, would want to really be interested in looking at it. Yeah, absolutely. I'm just to like dig into the, the weeds of it a little bit. Um, you know, I personally selected recent, the description at the bottom. And so a couple of things I want to point out that I really enjoyed about this product or this description. Um, is that, is the use of alliteration. This is just an example of good writing. I'm not sure if you guys know what an alliteration is. Um, but, you know, it's using uh, this example here, uh, here, relax, remix, and restore with resynth. So that use of the continuous R is, uh, you know, shows mastery over the English language and, uh, is, um, pleasant. It's just pleasant. Um, but also, what, uh, another thing that I really liked about it was that it not only, uh, describes the product accurately to the judge, but it uh, challenges the judge uh, and engages the judge. It asks the question at the end, ask yourself, what does a great puzzle, I can't see the rest, but I know there's a question mark at the end of that, and what I know it's a question. What does so, a great puzzle sound like? What does a great puzzle sound like? So, I mean, that's like, that's yeah, like, like some challenge. deep uh, philosophical question. That's like, you know, one hand clapping or like a tree falling in the forest and no one hears it. Um, but so you're immediately intrigued, um, and, you know, that that's, it, it, it creates a, uh, a mental... 
Uh, you're basically yeah, like effectively just like burrowing into my brain as I go into the game. So it's not even about necessarily describing the game, but inciting uh, the, the person to play and think about it as they, as they dive into the game. To finish with the question, it's really a good trick, not only for the description, but also for the emails. Like, if you have something to share with, and then you put like a question, it makes people to reply you, or at least to think about this, right? And I also want to add a, a little tip about description. So whenever you're writing your description, think about like other games in the same genre or, or similar games. Can they say the same thing about themselves? So if they can, then it's not unique to you, right? So if you're, if you're saying some of the things that Mike was saying, like, you know, it's a, like a match three or something, anybody can say it's match three. Or using words like great gameplay, amazing audio, like all of these adjectives are not going to make us think better about this. If we understand what is unique about this, and if you can only say that about your game, then it's unique. If you can say it about all the games in that genre or that category, it's not really that unique. And also the game description is not only for your selections, it's also this, the stuff that goes to your description of the markets when the, your players see it, so you probably need to have it really good when you're right. And just one last piece of advice, keep it short. Yeah. Like, I don't need an essay on why your game is, is good or not good or, or whatever. I need two lines that are going to convince me to play it. If you think about it, um, what's the average app store conversion rate when a user goes to the app, the app store and downloads it? Like 3%, 5%, something? I don't know. Like Actually, it's, it's a lot better than that if you include pictures and video. So it, yeah. it's all over. But you have like maybe 10 seconds to, to get somebody to actually download the game. And they're not going to see most of that description anyway. They're going to see that, those first two lines. Yeah. And then On they the have stores, to they more. also have like a short description that is limited by 180 signs. Yeah. You, you know what the game description is, guys? The game description is the dating app profile for your game. Write it accordingly. Really nice. <laughs> Do you have something to add about game description or we can move further? Let's, let's move. So the next question is, when you apply with your game, it is instructions to download. So it looks... Pretty weird on the first side, but the main idea of this slide, and I think I will share the opinion of all the judges, that the simplest is their instructions to download the game, the better, right? Always. Always. So Definitely. also, if there is, <laughs> if there can be only a link to download to the store or to Dropbox or to any other folder, just give like really short description. How can we get the game? So for example, the last example, it was added by me. Sorry. <laughs> it was for the game that was for the test flight. So you know that you need special permission. You need to email or phone ID or whatever for, to open the access to the judges. So just give a short description about that. And I really like this one because it gives you actually an options. We share the judges' emails because it's our job and their job, volunteering job for us. But it gives the option, like, if you don't want this way, you can, you can move in this way. It's really nice. But keep it as simple as possible. Because, and, yeah. Yeah, we'll just add to that a little bit. Like, simplicity is good, but if at all possible, just the link. So to give you some context as to like how this information is being received by me or by the other judges or you know if you're submitting to like Touch Arcade for a review or whatever the case may be, I ha I get a Google Doc and like I don't know if many of you out there have like uh, Google Doc fatigue where it's just like everything's everything's in a Google Doc now and it's just absolutely exhausting. But like I don't want to have to copy and paste the link out from the text. I want to click the link. That's all I want to do. So don't tell me how to, like, don't, um, and I'm sorry, this, you know, um, we, we were supposed to say very positive, but don't tell me just download it and install it. I know how to download and install things. Give me the link so I can download and install yeah, it. Just I'm not an click idiot. here. Yeah. Duh. <laughs> and then test flight too. Like, that's like industry standard. It's very user friendly, uh, beta platform. I, I highly recommend it. It's not as ideal from the developer perspective. It takes a little while to clear the builds, but that you also know that they'll be approved by Apple. I believe that's like a similar uh, approval process. Um, so please, yeah, t test flight, uh, on iOS betas. And also make sure that the links actually work. Cause we've had cases where like Dropbox or whatever kind of like file transfer links have expired. So it's kind of like if you start evaluating on the last day and then everything has expired, then there is most likely no time to get it fixed and actually evaluate it. And then in that case, the quality of your video kicks in because the evaluation is going to be done based on your video then. And, and the same thing with uh, with like Steam keys or something, if you need to provide keys, 
make sure there is enough for, for the judges. Just figure out how many there are or just ask. I'm sure Yulia will let you know. Actually, for Indie Prize, sorry, for Indie Prize, we actually like gather all the applications and, and the last day we count how many judges will receive. Like, for example, again, for Steam or for Apple. And then we send your request. And there is like an application form in your emails everywhere that you need to reply during the next 24 hours because we have, we are limited in time and judges are limited in time. And like, we appreciate your time and you need to appreciate the judges' time. People who actually keep a lot, uh, spend a lot of time on the selection and playing the games. So when we ask, it's like only for indie price. If someone asks you to reply within this certain time, please make sure you reply if you are interested in being in this contest. Because like we send an email, ask for additional Steam case for all the judges, and you didn't reply. So judges can't play your game. And they are limited to time as well, like for two weeks. So yeah. There's one closing point too. Uh, with test flight, you'll see if somebody downloaded your game. So if you want to see like <laughs> how many of the judges are actually playing your game, that, that's actually very helpful information for you. So uh, just you know, a little, a little edge, a little, a little edge or advantage there. Yeah, but all the other applicant applications, please make sure that you have like maybe not only Steam case, but there are also like um, some games that require uh, passwords, login. So make sure that you provide with as easy as access to your game as possible, because it's like Yulia to download the game, I had to download it, then to play, then ask me to log in, then my email was for some reason already taken, and then I spent half an hour figuring out how to enter the game, it makes a lot of trouble. It's a zero. It's a zero. Shut it down. It's not zero, yeah. but it's like, you know, it's this is one. a... This is the first impression. This is the first impression. You didn't make any efforts to be here or to be selected for being reviewed or for the market or for the publisher. Seriously, like, you also need to evaluate people's time. We'll go on, right? So the next is game art. There is also like a selection from, from our judges. Please comment. This is the art that you actually provide for the <laughs> for the application uh, for the applications. So what we have in the indie prize judges for for those who are not familiar with that, we ask for the game art. This is the game art that actually goes to the, our website, to printed program, to all the banners that you see with the list of games, and we actually have like an examples on our site, and uh, a lot of. Developers provide with different pictures. Some of them even provide with icons. And there are other mistakes that they usually do. They provide with the wrong size. So we have seriously more than 1,000 applications during the year. We are taking care about every, each application like separately. But when we have so many, you actually receive the art, copy it, and put it on the site. And then there are complaints like, you know, our art doesn't look really good. Can you please replace it? Yes, but why does it look good? It look bad. Because there's wrong size and it displays in a really bad way on the side. So if someone requires you and put a special format, special size, please make sure that you do that. It's not so complicated for you to do, but for teams who actually receive these applications, like to make, to fix 100 images, it's really a lot of work. And, uh, like our web designer, didn't want to do that. And he, like, it's not about the villain to do that. He doesn't have time and sometimes he doesn't pay attention to this. So it's your job to make your game look good. And like, I really like their choice of the judges because it has not only art that shows like the main characters of the game, you know, the main story and, um, it also shows, uh, the game title. Because this is exactly the image. If, if you're requested for one image, this is exactly, uh, the image that can introduce your game. And you probably want to have your game title on it. Probably? Probably? No, not probably. Absolutely. Okay, That's right. one of my two pet peeves with the game art. One, put the name of the game on the art that everybody's going to be looking at. It shouldn't have to be said, but you know, there we go. Um, second thing is, I've seen People submit icons or screenshots, and the, yes, it's nice to show gameplay, but sometimes the characters that are really most appealing are very, very small and hard to make out. So pick art that actually really highlights those things that are particularly appealing or particularly unique about your game, and don't forget to put your name on it. Yeah, I, I think the, the comment actually goes beyond just... Uh, art submitted to, to indie prizes. I think it's uh, also the same about like all the, um, any kind of like game cards or flyers or stickers or whatever you guys make. 
Like we've seen a lot of them without a name or without web address or anything. So imagine if neither of those pictures actually had any text on it. It would be like, oh, this is a cool one. So I should go outside and go through like 100 games and then figure out which one it is. Nobody's going to really take the time. And it's the same as like people are going around and, and getting your stickers next to your, your stations over there. But like the sticker can show a cute cat. It's, it's really nice. But at the end of the day, you know, what do I like? I don't know even what is the company or what is the game. I want to get in contact with you. I have no idea. So in that sense, like always, always think like where is it going to be used and what is the data that should be on there? Like I would even go as far as, as add a, a website there. Uh, it kind of sounds like a, a business card without an email address. Um, specifically, though, with this game, uh, the, I, I picked Cat Quest in almost a year. Uh, the, one of the things I really like about the Cat Quest art is that, like, I feel like that cat is looking at the game you're about to play. You know what I mean? It's like staring ahead into the enjoyment that you're about to have. I mean, it, it looks like an epic adventure is about to take place. And then, particularly with Almost a Hero, um, I actually, uh, well, Almost a Hero submitted two um, sets of images. Uh, there was this one, and then there was kind of uh, just the sort of, like, that name, uh, logo, typography up there or whatever. Um, I like this one because, you know, it shows the characters, and that's really great. But I actually picked it because of the other one. And the reason I picked it, I don't know if you can really see it very clearly, but you know it sounds like the O is a bullseye, but none of the arrows are in the middle. Like, doesn't that seem kind of like funny? Like, you know, like clever? Like, it's like almost a hero. They didn't get a bullseye. I don't know. I just thought it was like, <laughs> I, thought, I thought that was good. You know, obviously the polish is important and, you know, it's, it's gorgeous art. But, I, you know, it's sort of like very similar to the game descriptions for recent, the sort of those like psychological triggers. Um, so for me, yeah, it's like staring ahead at the adventure to, to happen or just that, that cute little clever twist. Like most people would be like, oh, bullseye, you know, like, uh, you know, like this is the greatest game that's ever, ever been made. It's totally original. It's hundred percent the best thing. So yeah, I like, I like those little twists. That's nice. So nice, uh, art is really important part to represent your game and not only to the contest, but on the market. Do you have any special requirements for the art when you sub submit it to the market, except like dimension and size? Like, are there any recommendations that you can give your um, mouth open and big teeth in the icon? <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> uh, when you're when you're submitting um, icons in particular, um, one of the things you can do if you've got a, a game with a lot of action in it, in it is make sure that you've got part of the image or part of the character actually breaking a virtual border on that icon. So you have a, a, a very programmatic limit on the icon dimensions. Create the border around your icon just a little bit inside of that physical limit. And that way you can actually have a little bit of the art jumping out or leaping out of the frame of the icon to the user. And that gives a sense of activity, of motion, and of excitement and depth that you just don't get with most, you know, other traditional, very flat, indie-looking icons. So, one, it helps make your studio look bigger and more important, and it helps the user feel more excited about what the game might be. And actually, I can something to add to this. Um, your game icon is not only on the store. It will also be on their homepage, on the phone or a laptop. And everyone has like a customized homepage, right? So it won't be like either white or black or like one color. It will be really like mixed colors. And some colors that you use on your icon could probably not look good or like, you know, make a contrast with their homepage. But if you use a frame, you can make a contrast. So either a frame will be a really good viewer on the homepage or something inside the frame. Yeah, it's actually, do you guys know what the most, down, the most used app in the whole world is? Can you tell us? It's the clock. It's the clock app. And have you ever seen <laughs> Uber's icon? You know how much that looks like the clock, the clock app? app? Yes, it's a clock app. So it's just like, think about those things. Yeah, think about like, is it always about standing out? Or is it like, I don't know about you, but I, I turn like a bastard on phone, like on my mobile games. I, I, will, delete, I will delete your game in top, top seven days, unless it's like absolutely amazing or I paid money for it. Um, but having that like, you know, instead of make, make, trying to make it as bright as possible or as, you know, pop as much as possible, maybe make it more like familiar as possible. Something that you're sort of used to seeing on your phone all the time already. Okay, I think we talk enough about, or if someone have questions, just raise the hands, just in the middle of the panel, we'll be happy to reply, right? Oh, okay, there is a first hand. <laughs> there we go. Because then we will like move to the other questions and probably it's better to discuss <coughs> immediately. There's a bit of a microphone shortage. We tend to be monopolizing them up here. Yeah, so you can just start yelling. Just start yelling at us. 
Thanks. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to ask you guys about well, how do you feel um, putting store icons in art? Um, because sometimes it's, I think it's hard to identify if it's a game is it actually a PC game, it's a mobile game, is it both, is it console? Um, how do you feel like for these kinds of images using using um, store icons? Like like showing your your games like store yeah, which platform and like your that? games actually on, especially yeah, in a mixed environment like here. Um, our experience in in the app store has been that showing login pages, showing menus, showing even store pages or store catalogs really decreases the amount of click-through and the amount of conversion. If you want to show items that come from an in-app purchase or premium items that the user has acquired, that's fine, particularly if you're using a screenshot and you're showing them in gameplay. Um, there's nothing inherently wrong with that, and if it makes a really good, compelling screenshot that shows action that makes your game differentiate from all the others that are just like it, then that's fine. Please don't show just catalog listings, though. Any other questions? Okay, so we'll look for the next topic. This is video. I think everyone will agree that video is one of the most important parts that shows your game, except the, the game itself, right? This is like the introduction before you play in the game. I will just play really short videos that judges pick up so you can see it, and then... And then judges will comment on it. So the first choice is yep, downloading. I don't think they're both going to play at the same time. I think it's your choice. Yeah, I picked this one. Check this out. You and I both picked this one? Yeah. yeah. So you can probably like, turn off the sound so we can comment. So Chris, why did you pick up this video? Um, I I just I had it like playing on a loop basically. It just sounds great. It looks great. It shows what the game is. Um, it, you know, it doesn't. It's not a commercial. It's just a quick snapshot of what the game is. It sounds and looks amazing. And to me, like, I mean, the audio in this game is just mind blowing. You should definitely check it out if you haven't ha had a chance to yet. Um, I know the audio is really good when I don't know that I'm listening to it anymore. Like, it was just on. Like, it was just on for, like, maybe, like, 20 minutes while I was, like, actually playing the game and stuff like that. So, yeah, it just effectively communicates how you play the game and, and, and shows off those products, that, you know, the, the, the features of the game that make it stand out. Do I you have a lot to say about this, so let me let you go first. Well, I mean, I, I can say stuff in general about video, but I, since it wasn't my pick, then go ahead. All right, so um, I'm really glad we have Recents up here because there are some things that it does really well and some things it could really improve on. So Recents does a fantastic job of showing me the gameplay and showing me that I've never seen another game like it. It immediately grabs me and makes me interested. Those are really strong points about that video. Weak points about the video, I watched that video three times and had no idea even how to start playing the game. I had no context for anything. What this video is just begging for is some text over, not voiceover, because, I mean, some people, the video's got to work if people watch it with the sound off. Um, it's, a, it's, it's unfortunate in the case of recent where the sound is brilliant, but it has to work when the sound is off. So text over that actually gives me a little bit of context as to what's going on and what I, the player, am doing in the video clip that I'm watching would have been gold. Then it would have been, it would have really locked the deal for me. So it's recent, I mean, that's a, it's a, it's a good, good video to have up here for this, for this session. And I will play the second choice. I think this was your favorite, right, Mike? Let's listen like a little bit of... Mama, one day the Dark King will come to steal me. Will you save me? Mama! Can you please comment? What kind of game is this? Does anyone, can anyone look at that and think, oh yeah, that's a game of this genre. Does someone know what game genre this is? 
It is a hidden object game. And so that's what, this is a hidden object game, unlike almost all of the other hidden object games I see videos for. Because this is as much a puzzle game, I feel, as it is a hidden object game. It's a narrative-based story as much as it is a hidden object game. I see hundreds of hidden object games every year, guys. This is the first one that really felt like it was a whole lot more than a hidden object game. This busted the genre for me, and it made me want to play it to find out how hidden hidden object games can be way more than I ever thought they were. It made me want to play that genre of game. It's also a surprisingly good game. I'm not, I'm not a hidden object game at all. I'm not like a 60-year-old lady, so I don't really get too, too into that. But <laughs> beg, I, beg your pardon, Chris. <laughs> I know. I, I, I do look like my way. So I... Uh, I played that game for probably like 45 minutes to an hour, which in, for context, you have like 500 games and, you know, two weeks to get through them plus like an actual life. You blew the budget for 20 of your games. Yeah, yeah. So sorry to those other games I didn't get to play. You can blame them. Um, yeah, no, it was, it was really, really good. So this was like an introduction how the, yeah, you have something to add? Yeah, I just wanted to make a few like general comments about video. So a lot of the time we see videos that are just kind of like start with the gameplay in the beginning and take you through tutorial that only has like super minimum uh, things that are there, like not full features, like nothing really that is exciting. So that is probably the worst thing that you can do for yourself if you want to get a good score. And um, at the same time, I understand that it's difficult to kind of like just jump into and, and, and show a very difficult level because the judges sometimes then don't understand, as, uh, as was the case with one of those videos, like how to actually play it. So making a nice combination of something very simple in the beginning that says what it is and then taking on with the, like carrying on with the with the topic and then having more like later stage kind of features, maybe showing something like being bought or something like that is always a good way to kind of just think like what are the coolest, coolest things in your game and then have a bit of a like a beginning intro and then just show the cool stuff. And uh, and also as, as Mike says, like always uh, text over and sometimes it's even like what I've seen really nice videos where they're like not really pointing with a big red arrow, but more or less, like what am I looking at? So sometimes it's a lot of commotion going on on the screen and I don't really know what I'm looking at. Like, am I buying something or did something just happen? Did I make a combo? Like what is going on? But if you have text there, then it's kind of like, oh, oh, so now this happened, now this happened. So it's it kind of like takes you really fast through the experience, but it's still like both um, understandable, but still showing off the coolest thing. That's actually a great description of an optimized video. And I bring that up because we've actually got some numbers from, uh, from the app stores. And if you have no video on your product page and you add just even a basic video like recent, you're going to have a uh, conversion rate bump of about 18%. If you go from a basic video to an optimized video like Kadri talked about, you'll see an additional 22% increase in your conversion rate. It's a super important thing to get right. So obviously if you have no video, go to a basic video. If you've got a basic video, go to an optimized video. It's one of the most important things you guys can do to get increased conversion from that uh, game's landing page. So when you first receive the application forms with the video and you open it like to get the first impression from the game, what are the main mistakes that you've seen in the video and you would never recommend developers to do? Oh, oh my God. <laughs> where, where, where do we start? Okay, actually, uh, How many for, hours do we have? For, for context, um, and I, I, I think I stand, myself, I stand out a little bit from the other judges, I don't, I don't watch your videos um, at all. You guys are not video producers. You're game developers. I play your games. Um, some of these game developers decide they're going to play video producer on TV, though. I mean, they give me a, a video that's nothing but trailer and no gameplay. Yeah, and I think well, the main thing that uh, made me want to stop watching videos was some of the issues with the videos. The biggest thing that drives me crazy is when it's a camcorder of somebody holding a phone <laughs> 10 feet away demoing the game to somebody else. They're even doing a bad job of demoing the game to that person. They should let that person play that game and figure out the UI for themselves. Um, but instead, they're like, no, do this, do this, do this. It's like that. Uh, it looks like crap, and uh, it's, yeah, it's not. You know, there was only one of those this year. Yeah, yeah. So you know, people, are, people are, are getting better. But yeah, for I mean, in, in the industry, you're going to need a good video. Um, 
I, in terms of indie prize judging, I, I, I don't, I don't watch them. But exactly what you said, like in this industry, you need a good video. You need the video anyway. Yeah. Like either you are pitching to a publisher, or an investor, or going for a prize, or putting it up on the store, or just like on your own website. You need that video anyway. So just you know, make the effort and make a super cool one, and you can just use it whenever. Things I hate about videos. Don't start with a login screen. I get it. Don't start with a menu. Unless your menu is really clear about how it makes your game different than everything else, and you can explain that to me quickly, I don't want to see the menu. I want, you know, and um, so the, the, the one I was talking to you about that was pretty much all trailer and then ran some credits at the end, I was watching that with someone, and the comment was, where's the game? I mean... That was a customer. The customer doesn't play trailers. We don't judge trailers. Um, what, a, what a waste of my time. Yeah. And sometimes I see that uh, some videos are made like maybe before the game is final and ready, so you can't actually record actual gameplay from inside the, the, the game. But, you know, there are always hacks around it. You can always fake your video a little bit as long as at the end of the day it, it comes out the same way. But you don't necessarily have to have 100% everything like working to perfection before you make that video. So that's, you know, that that's where your video editing skills kick in. Uh, a couple more things. When you've made this amazingly cool video and you've got something you're really proud of and then you update your game... Make sure your video doesn't show an ancient version of your game that doesn't include some of the stuff you've updated. Also, this amazingly cool video that you've got that's got all of the buttons or uh, character dialogue in English isn't going to fly so well when your customers are using Cyrillic or simplified Chinese. Yeah, and actually, uh, one more pet peeve. Don't, don't, don't. Don't make me download your video. <laughs> why, why would you do that? Put it up on YouTube. Like, have you, <laughs> it's secret. And just YouTube. I, like, I, I mean, why, why, like, why is it like on Mega Upload NZ or whatever, or like Vimeo or any of the, Just put it up on YouTube. And you know, actually, recent, uh, to their credit, was on YouTube. But the link to their video brought me to their YouTube page, not just to the one video. So then I had four videos in front of me. Um, and again, you know, like more engaging, more, more, you know, drawing you into more of, of what they're doing. I'm not going to register with a Russian website to watch your video. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. How about Chinese? They're actually like a mistake that a lot of developers do because like when you open their submission forms, the table, and you see seriously like links not to YouTube, not to Vimeo, not even to Dropbox, to some weird sites and like, I especially like don't really always want to open like unfamiliar sites for me. And the other problem is li- links even on YouTube. Some developers give access only to like a certain email to watch the emails on, uh, to watch the videos on YouTube. So when you submit something and you share the link and you want people to see it, make sure it is accessible to everyone who have this link. Yeah, right? That's happened quite a few times where it's like, Sorry, you don't have the permission to view this video, and it's like, well, sorry, you don't have the permission to re, re, like be judged in, in this contest. You don't have the permission yeah. to get my score. Yeah, you're One. out of here. One. <laughs> there is no doubt that video is really important. You say that every like game developer in this industry needs to have a good video, but if you don't really have a budget to to hire a really good company who will make you video, what are your options? Android debug bridge. Um, if you've, you've got a mobile game and it's on Android. Play it on Android, um, attach to your device with your computer via ADB, um, record what you're playing, send it to your device, download it from your device, and at least you have a really cool gameplay video that doesn't have a video of your, you filming your phone in your hand on your kitchen table. So at the very least, use ADB to capture gameplay video and upload that. Just that alone will give you that 18% lift. I mean, it's not that difficult to do it yourself these days. I mean, come on, kids are, are like, you know, uh, editing videos and stuff and, and adding and things on there. It's, it's just a matter of just taking the time and, and figuring it out. It's not that difficult. Okay, so are they listening to their advices or just Google how to just, make just a Google. video? Just, yeah. And just make a really good game. It's, yeah. exactly. it's easy. Any other comments or mistakes about the video? Yeah. Good, Okay. So the next, what we ask in the submission form is achievements, milestones, any other thing that you are, that you are proud to share with us. It's not for judges. It's for us because we have, you didn't, I think you pick up. No. No. 
Judges didn't see that because they do not judge by your achievements. But we have a huge list of press contacts. And if someone contacts us, we need to send not only the game description. We want to share something really amazing about your game. And again, when you have thousands of submissions, I want Google for each game it separately. So I either have something to share, like something special about your game, and I will just copy it and send it, or I will just send a link and all the information that I have in submission forms. So what I see in this, like a lot of developers just say, it is not released, any achievements, or um, no achievements, or just space. So there is always something, right? There is something that you want to share. So this is our choice of, uh, I think it was Mike and Chris. So can you comment what exactly developers need, what information developers need to share with us to get like, you know, more attention, how to like, yeah, how to attract more attention to their game, what achievements? Well, um, so I think there's, uh, there's, there's achievements and then there's you just talking about things that don't matter at all. Um, like I don't, okay, so one, one of the best App Store games of 2016, according to Apple, is that Editor's Choice? Did you get a design award? I don't, I don't know. It's like your Apple editor, like some guy, some, some guy said that. But there is something that makes you like a little bit special, according to the other thousands of applications. Totally. Yeah, I mean, I think ultimately what you're showing is like social proof. You know what I mean? Like, and like in my line of work, like most of the business I get to do is because I know people and other people have you know recommended. That we work together and things like that. So, I mean, that's effectively what you're doing. You're, you're providing social proof that, you know, what you have is of value. Um, and I think, you know, participation in this contest is, um, you know, one of the, one of the, the best prizes you get from winning or being nominated at an indie prize is having the chance to put that logo on, you know, a, a submission for another contest. Not only winning and nominated, it's also for the finalists because they have already, like, they're finalists, yeah. right? Because so they're every, selected. Yeah, they also have the sticker absolutely. for that. So, um, but, yeah. it's, but it's also, I think it's, it's things like, you know, uh, like featured in 70 countries or, yeah. or like, you know, 10 million downloads or 4.9 rating or something. Like, somebody else believes in me too is basically what you are trying to say. So how do you say that? Um, social proof is, a, you know, it, it is really important for those reasons. Um, it's also important for some other reasons that might matter to you. Think about how people at the app stores decide whether or not they're going to feature a game. Um, I can't speak to Google and Apple, but I can speak to Amazon. The team at Amazon that decides what game to feature, they're not driven by, oh, we'll make more money or, oh, you know, this other thing will happen. Their core responsibility is customers need to be so happy that they clicked on that feature that they can't wait to click on another featured game. So it absolutely, those features have to drive customer delight. And if I'm a feature editor and I'm looking at games that list we make tons of people happy, you're a lot more likely to get featured. So if you can, in your marketing material, um, maybe a couple places in your product description um, towards the end, list, hey, we've got a track record of making customers really, really happy. Uh, it'll be a lot easier for us to feature your game. And, well, a lot more appealing for me to try when I download it. Remember, freemium games aren't free. Otherwise, you each would have downloaded about 2.5 million games, right? No, there's an opportunity cost and time cost. It's an investment on your part. How do you justify that investment? This social proof is a big help in justifying that investment. Even if you don't have any achievements, like you didn't win any awards, there is still something positive that you can, like, you can send this message to people to make you special. Like, other this is, yep. I, I disagree. I think, I think if you've achieved something, you say it, and if you haven't, then go achieve that thing. Yes, but it can be not only the, like, the achievements, it can also be featuring, right? It's not an achievement, it's not a win in the I context. I think featured is an achievement. I mean, you're picked from the 3,000 apps that were submitted to the App Store that hour. Five star rating on a stream. Yeah, that's absolutely an achievement. Uh, okay. We care a lot about ratings on um, any platform where, where games are ranked or rated by customers or even by um, senior industry press. So if you've gotten a really good review at, say, um, you know, Game Sauce or, or you know, TechCrunch or, or something, yeah. you know, absolutely list it. Put it up there. Yes. I think, too, like, I mean, very similar to the game description. Keep it short, um, as succinct as possible. I mean, if you're, if you're smart and you have a good press kit, you don't need the text to communicate most of this. There's probably the logos that you can, uh, you, you know, you can add to 
press kits or app store pages, or whatever the case may be. And that's gonna that's gonna resonate a lot quicker. Because like, when am I gonna read a whole sentence and figure out, oh, okay, great, you did this thing, or am I just gonna like see a, a gold badge and assume that that's a, a, an achievement related uh, prize that you have, and, and then and just move forward from there. We have a really nice list from Kadri from Game Founders with their advices, and this is pretty the end of our panel. And I want each judge like to be really short with the main advices they will give to people who really want to be selected in there, who really want to be selected with their games. Kadri, do you want to start? Hmm. Well, make an amazing game. <laughs> no, sh no shortcut for that. No. You know, none of the advice we're going to give you is going to make any difference at all if your game isn't fun or at least in some way unique. But uh, but uh, in, in, in the real world, so of course, make an amazing game. But I think make the judging easy for us. So think about like if you are judging, imagine us, like any of us, sitting at a computer with a fabulous Google Doc of hundreds of, of games. Like what would make me kind of think more positively about this? If everything is like very correct and easy and precise and everything works and I can I can understand everything from the game, from the video, and I can just do it really fast, that also makes me believe that you guys are organized, you understand what you're doing, and even though I don't play every single detail of the game, probably it's well done. And like the overall kind of like attitude towards that application is going to be a lot more positive. So I think just like do your best in not just with the game, but also with making the people's lives easier. It's the same if you are, you know, uh, being judged at a um, at a competition, or if you are pitching to investors or publishers. Like always, think what do they want to achieve, and and how can I make that easier for them? I think that's a very general piece of advice. But all the all the points there are making it specific. So there you go. Thank you, Mike. Your main advice is. Take a picture of that slide. Actually, these are the list of advices from Kadri, but I received their piece of advice from each of the judge, <laughs> and it was almost the same. Like, seriously. Chris? I have, I have uh, one piece of advice slash one request. And, I mean, it, it kind of feeds into all this, but uh, I'm, like, I'm riddled with obsessive compulsiveness. And I mentioned the Google spreadsheets fatigue, like, Yulia, as you know, as you all well know, runs a really tight ship. She doesn't let us do anything to the Google Doc, like change like rows or columns or resize anything. Or no anything. edits. Yeah, it's it's. Uh, she runs a really tight ship. So what ends up happening? There's like different lengths for things. It's, it's 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 a visual like mess, honestly. So do me a favor. Go to Do Press Kit. Uh, it's a press kit service made by Rami. I'm sure you've heard of him. He's like some indie game demigod or something. Um, <laughs> Make a press kit with all this advice, and then just put that link for that press kit in every single field. And then that press kit's going to tell your story. I don't, I don't. That I, would annoy me. I really? don't want that. I, that would no, annoy, don't do that. One don't more thing to I have to go out to a separate yeah. site to look at one and more read click. through. It's going to have everything. It's going to have everything in everything. It's going to have the videos. Yeah, it's going to have the icons. Yeah, but then you have to do that like hundred of times. Because you're clicking out from the Google Doc all the time. Well, we can think about depends. having just press kits please, instead you can't, of... You can't please them all. <laughs> okay, I, so, I would so love for to see you have a proper press kit. For us, don't do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can do that just for me. I'll, I'll give you my card later. We'll, we'll just send that one to Chris. <laughs> Your personal page. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you. I think we shared everything we wanted. We have more, but we are limited in time. So any questions, please? That was very good information. Thanks, everyone, for the panel. And it certainly reflects a lot of advice we give to Xbox developers as well in my world. Um, one question for you, game art with the game title, critical, I agree. What about the localization of the game title? The localization of the game title on the game art, what's your advice for this? Um, absolutely relevant for the market that you're in. And don't forget to change the image so that it is culturally relevant for the market that you're in. Um, I get that some, um, First-person shooters have this really amazing kind of a, um, you know, a, a dark red cast over this guy that, you know, this bad magic is happening to. That's a complete fail in China, right? I mean, don't use that image when, you, when you're promoting your game in China. So, again, be, be, be sensitive to that. And I think the localization is just not about art. It's also about video. Like, we've seen so many videos that are, like, in... Chinese or, or something and then there's a like 
heavy text on top of the video, they're probably doing what we just said, you know, just like you know, write text so that we know what we're looking at. But if that text is in Chinese, it's not really helping a lot. Cool. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. So a uh, warm round of applause, please, for uh, moderator and panelists. Thank yeah, you. thank you so much. It was a pleasure to be with you on one stage. Thank you. Thank you.